All right, so we are at the trailhead for Soda Peaks Lake. What on earth kind of mushroom is this? Hang on. That thing's pretty nifty. Lots of big bunch berries on this trail. I've been snacking a little. The huckleberries are ripe too. What did you say, Amanita Mascaria? Yeah, flying Amanita. Flying Amanita. If you rub them on your bum bum, you get real high. That's too light. Poisonous, I assume. Um, mildly toxic, intestinal distress, potential for hallucinations. <laughs> so all in all, a good time. There we go. I do believe these are oyster mushrooms. Though not in any degree of confidence to eat any of them. Okay, so. Here's where we just came in. And there's where we gotta go. Oh, she's a climber. Once we get up there, that'll be the borderline of the Trapper Creek Wilderness. And we just follow the ridge for a minute and descend towards the lake. Whew see if we can get a view of the lake from up there, but uh, I'm not really counting on it. Okay. There's a treacherous climb. But here we are on the border of Trapper Creek Wilderness. So if we get up here, we can see down to Soda Peaks Lake. This will be our destination for the next two nights. Should be fun. I just had to share this view. Not really picking up the light the way I want it to, though. That's all right. I'm sure you get the idea. Oh, there we go. That's better. My God, there's a mountain right there. Sure is. Which one's that? St. Helens? No. I think that's Adams. Adams. Holy. All right. We think we found bear's head tooth mushroom here. I hear it's delicacy. I don't know if it's too far gone to eat at this stage or not. Okay, so we found another big bear's head tooth here. I decided to harvest it. I'm going to go ahead and try cooking up a little bit of it and see how it does for me. Friend of yours? She is just, well, I'm not going to assume it's gender, I guess. Yeah, that's really It's just cool. welcoming us to uh, the welcoming. lower part of the trail because we haven't actually made it to the lake just yet. We're almost there. We just passed a couple Australian ladies with a couple little kids and a dog, and a dog who borked at us. It's all right though. So uh, they said that it got pretty cold last night. Their weather report said 34 for government camp, which is a lower elevation. So it's gonna get chilly. Um, yeah. I thought it was kind of funny though because they were wearing puffy coats and gloves and knitted hats and the whole nine yards walking out of here. And I know you can't see me right now and I'm not going to bother turning around the camera, but I am wearing just the same thing I would summer hiking. 
my thin polyester shirt, my thin nylon pants, my regular darn tough hiking socks, and some merino boxers. That's it. And a hat. Yeah, my hat is a. Uh, Right here, hanging on my chest as a foraging pouch. It's got my mushroom in it. So, anyway, we're almost to the lake. Well, there's our lake. <clears throat> so we just have to basically finish our little approach right here. It's a little clear area right up here with a no camping sign, which is just for the little day use area. And then just beyond are the campsites. And now there were a couple of cars at the trailhead, but I'm thinking those people may very well be gone. Uh, there were two cars. It's possible there's still somebody here. But there's multiple sites, so I'm not particularly concerned about it. There's our lake. All right. Let's go pick a site. I need to relax for a minute and then uh, do some setting up. All right, well, it started kind of raining, so I didn't video my setup, so I wanted to keep my camera dry. Here's what's left of my gear bomb. It's my food in the blue bag there. That is my battery charger. That is a shoulder sling bag with all my fishing stuff in it. Water filter, Mio camera bag, pole, eggs, some Parmesan, hard cider, some snacks, my mushroom, some Pipsisawa that I gathered. So, what I've done here has pitched my tarp as an A-frame and closed off the end. Because it gets kind of windy. And so I've got my entrance pointed away from the wind. And there I've got my Teton leaf bag. A zero degree bag. So I'll be warm. My backpack and my axe sitting out of the rain. Let's see what Todd's got going on over here. He has a, uh, I can't remember what the heck you call this. I don't remember the name of this shelter. It's a quarter pitch, three quarter pitch. Sure. That's what I call it. I'd pull that guy tighter. Let me show you its features. Oh, God. What we have here is the traditional ground dwelling setup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a ground dwelling. Todd's tool. old North Face bag that if it had an actual book? hood on it, it probably wouldn't fit in it. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, nope, got it all out, getting it lofted. Todd's got his camouflage climate pad. That's why you can't see it under there. Right. He has the same ground tarp that I do, except not the one that I'm using, because actually the one that I'm using right now may be smaller, but it weighs about half that, so. Ha! Processing up the firewood that we collected. Going for what I like to refer to as the Canadian kindling method. Now, if you watch outdoor YouTubers like I do, you'll notice that the Canadians will throw on huge piles of kindling. Now the reason they do that is because when you're in a wet climate, you need all of that kindling to dry everything out to make a big flame initially. Otherwise, it isn't going to work. So, this being the Pacific Northwest, 
we have the same issue. This is the other part of the firewood processing job. The soaring. this thing somehow. fishing <laughs> we're going fishing yes we're going fishing <laughs> large mushrooms spongy and porous underside PSA, if you do this, you're an asshole. This tree is alive. Do not chop at live trees. I don't know if this fire was set by man either. Well, it's, it lost But here's the insane thing. And look at how much they're chopped on this side too. This one's all chopped up. And yeah, what Todd's trying to show me I've already seen, but you have not. Look at how much is taken out of this. It's just a whole tree's missing here. There used to be one. And it's completely burned out the center. Yet, yeah. I guess. I mean, okay, it, it looks like Maybe these two are dead. Yeah. This one's alive. And this one's alive. Hey, Nick. Which is also attached. Um, watch out for snakes. <sighs> Billy or the belly 
in layman's terms. All the way up to the gills. Set the knife aside. He's got some sharp teeth. It's a good sized little trout. Alright, so then if you didn't cut deep enough, you do it the rest of the way with your finger. <laughs> and you've exposed the guts. So you just grab everything right at the end there where it goes up to the throat and pull it out. Sometimes it's oh, a little sorry. challenging. Uh, once or twice I've had to go in there and cut them out, which I think is what Todd is about to do. Air bladder intact. Ooh, full air. And then there's a mud vein in the bottom. It's actually blood. Yep. <laughs> Made out of real mud. Shout out to mud vein. Or mud bloods everywhere. So generally what one does is you dig your thumbnail into that, like Todd's doing, and you scrape all the way up the spine. And then that just breaks that entire thing and releases the blood. And you take and you rinse it out in the water. And all said and done, you hang on. And all said and done, you've got yourself a clean fish cavity. And then we get to the part we we'll figure out how we're going to prepare this fish. Oh, I'm going to leave that one up to you. All right, so I'm going to prepare this one for eating. Now, I think I'm just going to go pretty basic here. Nice. <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> Gives you the right. on the way out. Because, yeah, I just want to pan fry this thing. So, I'm going to go ahead... Oh god, I gotta keep a grip on it. I'm gonna cut through that way. I'm gonna cut through. I'm gonna get behind this fin. Cut through that way. That's the head and fins. I'm not the wooded beardsman, so I'm not going to eat that. Okay, now we have... I don't want the tail either. Pitch that. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the fins as well. Just leaves this guy.
Okay. I'm going to give that another rinse and that's going to be ready for cooking. seasoning and we got some butter so what I'm gonna do here this stove that I picked up which I got because it has such a large burner but I still don't know how I feel about it because it weighs eight ounces and then I still have to carry a canister of fuel to go with it whereas my solo stove my twig stove weighs nine ounces and I don't carry any fuel for it on a plank of wood that we split. be good. No doubt about it. It's really not 
Papa's getting fancy. Align the handles. See if that works. Oh. Don't touch it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Don't even fart. The thing might come down. It's funny, this is what I do at home because I have a big skillet that doesn't have the lid that fits it. Except I'll usually prop a spatula in this end to hold the other end up. I'm afraid of melting my spatula. Anyway, this will help. Keeps the heat in, keeps the moisture in. Should be good. You hear that sizzle? The stove is completely turned off. That aluminum disc I was talking about is retaining all that heat. So the fish is cooked thoroughly on the outside, but we don't know for sure that it's going to be cooked all the way through. It doesn't look like it on the back. So we're keeping it covered and using the retained heat to finish it off. Oh, you hear that? That's that fish oil. Anyway, Todd was just telling me that his axe wound hurts when it gets cold. Hi. It does. Um, not when the weather turns cold, but the wound itself. Uh-huh. His axe wound. I almost chopped my finger off one day. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Like, it bounced off a piece of wood and went into my finger, and then, um, I saw it splayed on the other side of the axe blade, and I thought to myself one thing. Well, that doesn't look right. I thought, what do I do? What do I do? I ran inside, I grabbed super glue, uh, I washed it out, I laid on my back, I put my feet up so I didn't pass out, Super glued my fingers shut and held it there. And what do you suppose the ER would have done if you would have went there? Stitches and needles. Yeah. And maybe, maybe he might have glued it. I don't know. Yeah, probably. There would it have been stitches gnarly. as well, though. It, it was like. Yeah. It was a, a fillet of finger. Anyway, so my axe wound hurts when it gets cold. Mm-hmm. It sells itself. Okay, so here's the deal. The fish is pretty thoroughly cooked on the outside, but it's still not cooked on the inside because the pan was too hot. Uh, it's an issue I've had with that burner in the past. I'm still not used to it. So what we're going to do, Todd has some powdered milk. We are going to make a mushroom cream sauce to finish it off in. So, And, and a little bit of booze. And look, yeah, and he's got some uh, southern comfort. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this. That's probably enough. Probably, yeah, what is that, like a Half third a of a cup, maybe? A cup, yeah. That should be plenty. Uh, we don't want to overdo it because we've never ingested this mushroom before and we don't know if our systems are going to be sensitive to it or not. So we don't want to go crazy and put ourselves into an unnecessarily risky situation. So anyway, mushroom cream sauce. Here we go. All right, she's starting to smoke. Woo! We're going to deep glaze the pan with a little water. Now that water has to heat up. Now the water has to heat up, that's fine. That gives us a chance to get all these little grunions off the bottom that are all delicious and stuff. It's steaming. From a little bit of uh, Grandpa's tonic. Let that boil down. Chance to break up. Yeah. Give it a good stir, stir. All right. Ah. Todd pointed out an interesting fact that this fish has now been fried, poached, and steamed. So here's our mushroom cream sauce. It's coming it together. Stands. It's slow. A 
mushrooms are as broken as part of you as me to believe. It's, hey, remember the song? Breaking up is hard to do. Yeah, well, it's true. So, we're gonna give it a little bit longer. Maybe give her a flip in a little bit. Yep, absolutely. A little like flippity dippity. And we're gonna do a magic trick, I bet. Yep. Make that disappear. Oh. Alright, by the sound of that sizzle, it's about time to give it a flizzle. Oh yes, the sizzle flizzle. It's actually time to add water to it. Oh my god, yeah. Second reduction. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Gosh, it's like trout. 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 Electro, eh? Pond trout. There's a little black pepper I threw in there. Okay. The fish is done. Uh, we need to reduce the sauce again a little bit. Add a little too much water. We're gonna divvy this up. We're gonna scoop the fish out. Todd's frying pan. Our lid. And then we're gonna split that fish and finish up the sauce. And then we're gonna top off our servings. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fish divvy. D. Just, I don't know, like a teaspoon or so. A little more. Perfect. I don't want any mushrooms, please. Alright, I don't want to take a lot because. I don't know. All right, that's probably good. Mm-hmm. We can set that aside for now. Mm-hmm. That is not that appetizing in that light, but it's gonna be good. I promise. Focus. Focus. There we go. Mm. Move Tasty. the light this direction. Yeah. I zoomed in a little. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so we've started the fire. This is what I like to call... Get rid of this light actually, you can see what's going on. This is what I call the Canadian kindling method. I was mentioning that earlier, but I don't know if I'm including that footage or not, or if I'm including the audio or not, etc, etc. <coughs> So the Canadian YouTubers always pile the kindling on like this, and they do it because in a damp environment you have to do it to get everything properly dried out and get enough heat built up. So this is also a damp environment. Everything is soaking wet here. God damp it. That's right. But as you can see, that fire's climbing up, because that's what fire does, it climbs. So the higher you pile all that stuff, the more chance you have of building enough heat to dry everything out and get a successful fire in the dam. Well, good moist morning. My camera lens is a little foggy, there's really squat I can do about it. I can try to wipe it, but it's just going to stay there. The air is wet. This is a fall Pacific Northwest morning. Letting our morning fire die out. I'm gonna go collect some more wood, try some more fishing. 
Um, I wasn't entirely happy with the amount of space I had in my shelter last night, so made some uh, little bushcraft tent pegs, pulled out the sides. So let me show you. Oh yeah, and I also brought this line out for the ridge a little tighter. We wiped the lens off a little bit, but we've only got a matter of time before it starts fogging up again. So, yeah, that's kind of my gear bomb inside here. I finally got enough room to actually put things beside me. I didn't really before. We've tightened up a couple of things on Todd's too because he was getting some water pooling going on. But he might reconfigure it today. We don't know yet. I think maybe a diagonal way. A diamond in the rough. Well, thought everything was good. Uh, it's been raining. All of my shelter is all dry. Everything's doing good. Um, I managed it though. I done went and pulled a nick. Let me show you something. So. Here's my shelter. Now let's be real quiet. Let me show you something. <laughs> uh, luckily they seem to be pretty docile overall. They're not bothering me. Let's hope it stays that way. Because I don't feel like moving. I'm not allergic, so... I'm going to cross my fingers. Alright, well it's been hours since I filmed anything. It's... I don't know, it must be 5.30, 6 o'clock, something like that right now. It's just been raining all day. It's just been kind of gross. Just gentle hissing. Yeah. What you see is kind of what it's been. Let's go look at the lake. You can barely even see it because of the mist. It's just kind of how it's been. Shelters are holding up. Show you Todd's new configuration. We just A-framed it. Turned it between these two trees. A little angled away from the wind that was blowing the rain in. And we got our firewood sitting under there. There's a whole mess of it over there. That piece there. We've still got some stuff over there we haven't processed. So we're set. But that's what we've been doing. So there's some more over there. That's about it. Uh, we tried fishing a little. We didn't catch squat. I well, did. Todd caught a little trout He's probably like and threw it back. He was teeny. Wasn't really worth hanging on to. And then nothing. Just nothing after that. Well, rain. Lots of rain. Lots of rain. So, this is what we're doing. <laughs> yep. It's still giggling. <laughs> Good morning for day three. So, the uh, shelter's starting to come down. We're getting all packed up here. Getting all packed up. There's my stuff going on here. Working away at it. Um, so, the Todd tarp didn't really hold up. Amen. He said he had water just straight coming through the fabric on this thing. It wasn't just the seam. He said when the rain was hitting the fabric of the tarp, it was like spraying through on the other side, just soaking him. 
It's like even his hat on his tripod there is soaking wet. His boots are soaking wet. So probably within a half hour after we went to bed, I heard him hollering and bitching over there. I decided to shuffle all my stuff over in my shelter and make room. We had a cozy little night together. <laughs> drying off my sit pad so anyway still managed to get some decent sleep and the rain finally started to let up this morning uh, come out twice. god it must have been pushing nine o'clock by the time the rain finally let yeah. up so the sun keeps peeking out it touched me earlier. anyway we're gonna finish getting packed up and uh we haven't decided if we're stopping at Zigzag Lake like we had originally planned. We may. We may not. We're probably not going to stay the night there if we do. Because everything's just soaked. And we don't really have any way of drying our stuff out. The sun comes out proper. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Alright, so we're pretty well cleared and packed. Fire's doused. Todd is temporarily taping his toes for the treacherous two-mile trek. I get, it hurts, dude. So begins the ascent. I mean... It was a good one, man. We've already been climbing. You found a toilet seat? Just goes up. It's true. We found one of those um, toilet seats that goes over a five gallon bucket laying in the woods. Which I think you can probably see it. <sighs> I didn't want to leave it here. Plus, the wife kind of wanted one of those things anyway for car camping. So. Whatever, it's not heavy. Anyway, the climb out, I think that section of trail is only about a third of the trail, which means the climb in here was about two thirds of the trail. So this is gonna be pretty nasty and steep most of the way, but when we're through it, we're through it. So. Anyhow, well, we made it, top of the ridge. It's a good one. Yeah, it's uh, those are the switchbacks. Hello, little friend. There departs the forerunner full of people that were asking us where the heck they were. Boy, are we the wrong people to ask. <laughs> no, we got, we got them straightened out. They're going to turn around and come back the other way. This is the perfect place to turn around. We just had to stop for this view What's better a minute on ago? the way out of here. Yeah, then we got distracted talking to those people. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to snap a couple of pictures and uh, we were going to stop at another lake for another night on the way out of here, but we're soaking wet. So, screw it. 